Artificial Intelligence and Machine Learning Lesson 2, How Computers Learn. Think of a skill you commonly use, like speaking, tying your shoes, cooking, or playing a game. How did you learn this skill? Please go to your lesson document, to your warm-up page, and answer your question here. How did you learn the skill that you're thinking about? From our discussion, I can see that you've come up with a great list. And we can see there are a variety of ways that we learn new things as humans. Today, we're going to talk more about how computers learn new things and think about how they might be similar or different from how we learn. Our question of the day for you to think about throughout this lesson is, how is machine learning similar to human learning? When we learn something new, we create a mental model in our brain to help represent the information and break it down into pieces. For example, when learning about the solar system, we think of small orbs rotating around each other to represent the planets. Computers do this too. When they learn something new, they create a machine learning model to help represent the information. This model helps them make a decision. In our last lesson, we helped AI bot develop a model for deciding whether something is a fish or not. Here's another key vocabulary word for this unit, model, a computer program designed to make a decision. We're going to simulate how a computer might create its first model to learn something new. In this example, we don't really know what we're learning yet, much like a young child, we're trying to notice patterns and see what we can discover. You're going to log into Code Studio and go to Lesson 2, Level 2, Looking for Patterns. When you get there, we're going to read the directions so that you can complete this activity about dragging the rectangles into a group. So here we are on level two, lesson two, level two, looking for patterns. Each box that you're going to see when you run the code, each box on the screen has three numbers in them. You can click and drag each box to move them around the screen. Try to group boxes together in any way that makes sense to you. You could compare individual rows of numbers to other boxes or compare numbers within the box itself, whatever makes sense to you. And then after you drag the boxes around the screen, so you have at least three different groups, you can have more groups than three if you'd like, you're going to do a screenshot and put that on your document. So we're going to this slide of your document, you're going to do the activity and explain how you group the boxes, and then do a screenshot and put it down here below the table uh, that shows how you group the different boxes. Once you've done that, you're going to click next and it will reveal what, uh, kind of give you an idea, reveal what those numbers actually represent. So you're gonna click run. You'll see these boxes up here. You can move them around so you can see what all the boxes look like. And then you decide how you might wanna group them. And it'll be completely up to you, but you need to have at least three groups. So um, take a, take a, so take a look at the numbers, decide how you might want to group them, answer the question in your document, and do a screenshot. Then click Next, and you'll find out what really happens. When you, collect, when you clicked Next, you notice that the boxes turned into colors. So what do you think those numbers actually represented? It seems to me that they were like the red, green, blue, numbers that we've kind of talked about before, and I didn't realize that, so this was all like a really interesting activity for me, and I hope that you found it kind of interesting too. So what groupings did you create, and did you see some kind of a pattern? This is really fascinating. Just by grouping similar numbers together, we were able to find patterns and create different color groupings. This is an example of unsupervised learning. 
where we were able to learn something without outside guidance. The only thing we paid attention to were the numbers on the cards called the features. This is similar to how online recommendations work. Computers try to find patterns in the items we buy so they can suggest new items for us. Here's some more key vocabulary words for this unit. Unsupervised learning, when a model trains itself to learn. And features, the inputs that the model uses to make decisions. So think about the examples we talked about at the beginning in our warm-up. People, you all decided some examples that you learned, and can you think of some of them that were unsupervised learning? Unsupervised learning is one way that computers can learn something new, but this isn't like what we did yesterday. Yesterday, we helped the computer learn something new by providing examples. This is like when you get older and a coach or mentor can help teach you something new. In the next level, we're going to try and learn something new with somebody's help. So now we're going to go back to Code Studio. We're going to click on the next level to go to level three, and this is called the green glass door. When you get there, you're going to play the green glass door game to try and determine what words are allowed through the green glass door. On your document, you're going to go to the next slide, and you're going to see there's five things to answer. Well, right now, you're only going to worry about the first two. So we're going to see what the game looks like, and then you're going to answer these first two questions, and then we will discuss. I'm going to go to the next bubble. We're here at the green glass door, and it says try to determine what words are allowed through the green glass door. So I'm going to click run. I'm going to start playing. And you're going to see, first you're going to click on new example word. And you're going to see what happens. So the word shows up and it says that it was accepted. You're going to click on another one. And you're going to find some that are accepted and some that aren't. So as you go through and click new example word, lots of, lots of times, see if you can determine what is the rule. After you try several new example words, you can keep clicking new example word, or you can try some yourself. If you think you have the rule figured out, you can try it. So do this for about five minutes or so and answer those first two questions on your lesson document. So what features do you think the computer is using to help create its model? So now remember what a feature is. It's the inputs that a model uses to make decisions. Then we're going to go back to our lesson document and try those last three questions. So what features do you think the computer is using to help create its model? And then how is this activity similar to yesterday's well, lesson one's activity where we were training it to recognize fish? How is it like that? And how is it different? So you can pause the video and answer these three questions. Be ready to discuss. This activity is an example of supervised learning where, where we learn something new by looking at examples. The wizard was helping to train us by providing labels for each of the words, either accept or reject. After looking at enough examples, we can start to figure out the pattern ourselves. This is similar to the activity we did yesterday or when you're asked to identify street lights or stop signs from an image. We're helping to train a driverless car by providing more data. Here's another key vocabulary word, supervised learning, when a human trains a model to learn with examples. We've got training, which is the process of giving examples to a model so it can learn, and label, the output you are trying to decide or predict with the model. And here's a graphic that kind of shows you the training data, the label, and this is all part of supervised learning. So once again, think about the examples we mentioned at the beginning in our warm-up. Were any of them examples of supervised learning? 